Welcome to the beginning of your student journal. This is on page 2, uh, 1.1, Solving Simple Equations. And believe me when I say these are going to be pretty simple. So we're going to skip all this stuff because um, it's just going to go a lot faster. So uh, first thing we're going to do is go over a few definitions. I think this is page, uh, let's see, 2, 3, 4. I, think, I believe this is page 4. So solution is really just another way of saying an answer. So any of these problems that work out, whatever answer you get, that's the solution. Uh, inverse operation. Inverse is just another word for opposite. So really you're thinking about opposite operations. Um, when you think about operations, uh, those are specifically referring to addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And inverse means opposite, so you should realize that, oh, what is the opposite of addition? Well, the opposite of addition is subtraction. So addition versus subtraction. And what is the opposite of multiplication? Uh, well, you should know that the opposite of multiplication is, let's see, is division, which I should not have needed to answer that for you. Uh, multiplication versus division. And we can just ignore that. <laughs> we can erase this. So uh, let's see, conjecture, uh, that's just an essentially a hypothesis, an educated guess or a guess at all. Uh, rule theorem equation, I mean, equation I guess is pretty important. Uh, something, something with an equal sign. If it doesn't have an equal sign anywhere in it, then it's just an expression. So an equation is important because, or the equal sign is important because it tells you that whatever is on the left side is the same thing as the right side. Even if they look different, um, they are equal, which means that they are essentially the same. All right, so I'll leave that there for a second. Well, you guys can just pause it. So I'm actually just gonna delete it now and move on to the next. So we're covering uh, five properties of equality and what that entails, a property of equality. So when something is equal to something else, then to keep it equal, if you add something to one side, you have to add that same thing. That's why they're both C, and it's not C and D. C means it has to be the same number. Um, if you add a number to one side, you gotta do it to the other side. It doesn't matter whether you start on the left or the right, it just is saying that whatever you do on one side, you do to the other to keep it equal. So what does that look like uh, in this sense? Uh, let's say if A equals B, so throw out a number, I will use five. Five is equal to five, right? Uh, so A and B are two different variables. Um, they could be the same number, they don't have to be. But in this case, uh, to make it obvious, I will just pick two or rather one number equal to itself. If five equals five, then if I add a third number C, so you can pick any number you want, uh, since it's the beginning of the lesson, I'm gonna keep it real simple and say uh, we are gonna be adding two. Say five plus two is seven, uh, but if I add it to the left side, then I have to go on ahead and add it to the right side. So you see, um, how did I do that even? You know, going from uh, the, the front or the top would be a, a equals B, and the second line would be A plus C equals B plus C. Uh, hopefully that's obvious to you. Uh, for the subtraction property of equality, it's saying if you subtract something on one side, then you gotta subtract it on the other side. So again, keeping with five equals five, which I don't know why I always gotta redo that. Five equals five, then five minus two, uh, that's the left side. That's the left side. Um, then I would also have to, geez, what happened? Five equals five. Then five minus two. Again, this is just the left side and then this is the right side. Um, so then again, three would equal to three. I hope that's kind of intuitive. It really should be. So moving forward, if you get that, um, you know, great, good for you. The section is called Solving Simple Equations. It should not be that complicated. Um, let A, B, and C be real numbers. This is substitution property of equality. They kind of threw it in a bad place, but whatever, I'll explain it anyways. Um, 
if a is equal to b, then a can be substituted for b or b for a in any equation or expression. Why did they even mention c? Who knows? Um, but here's an example. So let's say, um, again, sticking with 5, he might think, oh, well, what is equal to 5? Now, in the two examples last, I already said 5 is equal to 5, obviously. Um, but to mix it up, let's say 4. 4 plus 4 plus what? 4 plus 1 is equal to 5. And uh, separately, not relatedly, uh, let us say that um, what is 5, uh, let's see, 5 times 2. What is that equal to? Obviously, it's equal to 10. But on this left side right here, I said 4 plus 1 is equal to 5. If it is equal to something, that means the same exact thing, right? So that means I can substitute it. So right here, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to rewrite this, and I will say, instead of 5, what am I going to replace it with? Well, what did I say it's equal to? I can say 4 plus 1. So you'll see that I'm going to be replacing it in parentheses. That part is very important. Uh, 4 plus 1 times 2 is equal to 10. And the still is true. I have to do parentheses first. Uh, 4 plus 1. 4 plus 1 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10. Bada bing. Bada boom. Um, okay, moving on. Multiplication property of equality. If A equals B, if 5 equals 5, because God knows we haven't had enough of this number, 5 equals 5, then uh, 5 times uh, 3 is 15, is equal to 5 times 3. Uh, at, this, at the end here, we have a little thing that says C cannot equal to 0. And at first, you might think, well, why can't why can't it equal to zero? Five times zero is equal to five times zero. Is that not true? Of course it's true. However, however, I could say two times zero, which is zero, is equal to three times zero, which is true. But if I had to work backwards from this, uh, I would not be able to say two is equal to three. That's no good. Wrong x that, all right? So um, if a equals b, if you multiply it on the left side, and I multiply it to the right side, um, and that's all that's saying. And lastly, um, let's erase this before moving on. We have, let's see, what do we have? The division property of equality last, but certainly not least, um, let's say 15. And I think you guys know what number I'm gonna divide it by. Take a wild guess. 15 divided by 5 uh, is equal to 15 divided by 5. Um, 15 is equal to 15, and if I divide it by this, the same number, then they uh, are equal, definitively. I was going to say should be, but they are definitely just equal. Uh, again, C cannot be 0 because if you divide it by 0, uh, that's undefined. You know That just breaks things. You just can't divide by 0 ever. So those are the four, sorry, five properties of equality that we go over in this section. Uh, hopefully none of them were too complicated. If you're not sure uh, what we're going to use them for, well, I'm moving on into the next page of the student journal. Uh, show you a few examples of how to apply this. Um, so you have a four-step approach to problem solving. Um, understand the problem. What is the unknown? What information is being given? Uh, make a plan. So how are you going to figure it out? Solve the problem, whatever you decided on how to solve it, then you will just do it. And then you will look back, uh, which really just makes means um, check your answer, right? I see that it makes sense. So moving on, again, these are uh, some common problem solving strategies. Uh, guess, check, and revise, uh, or just called guess and check. Uh, use a verbal model. Maybe some of you guys are not so good at, uh, you know, just looking at an abstract equation like this and you need to frame it in practical terms. Well then frame it in practical terms, you know? Um, you start out with something and you, you got four, you had four, what starts with a W? Uh, I don't know, I honestly can't think of anything that starts with a W right now. Uh, you had four sets of windbreakers and you got four more. How many windbreakers do you got in total? You got 16, right? How many did you start with? Um, 
So let's just jump into these problems and uh, demonstrate a few. So again, the key to this section is inverse operations, inverse meaning opposite. So if we look at this, uh, what is the opposite of addition? Subtraction. That's right. I hope you said that out loud because it feels really weird pausing for you to answer. So let's go here. Um, the text is probably going to be too big, so uh, I'll type it out. And obviously, you can write it in your own handwriting uh, in a way that will fit. Say w plus 4 equals 16. What is the inverse operation of addition? It is subtraction. So what do I have to do? I have to subtract 4. But if I do it on one side, now look, I did it on this side, the left side. Then I got to go to the other side. The other side of the equal sign is where 16 is. So I'll subtract 4 from there as well. And then you got to think, uh, if I've already subtracted, if I subtract 4 from 4, that is 0, right? So I could write 0, or I could just leave it blank, because if it's 0, you don't really need to mention it. And I'm left with w equals uh, 16 minus 4 is 12. So we've solved it. We use an inverse operation. And we should check to make sure our answer makes sense. So if w equals 12, we should look back at what we started with. w plus 4 equals 16. Well, you plug it back in, or you substitute it, and you say 12. 12 plus 4 is equal to 16. Does that make sense? Yes, it does, because 12 plus 4 is 16, right? So we're right on the money with that one. But we can move on. This one, uh, number 2, is just another subtraction problem, so I'm going to skip that. Uh, number 3, I will work out with you. So we got negative 15 plus w. Uh, you see a negative sign, which in this case is um, essentially equivalent to uh, subtraction. So you, you got, what can I write there? I'll say negative 15 plus w equals 6. So what is the opposite of a negative number, or what is the opposite of subtraction? Addition. That's right. So we're going to add 15, and that's on the left side of the equal sign. This is the left side. And we are going to go to the right. Uh, so I'm going to space, 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 plus 15. So negative 15 plus 15 is equal to 0. Uh, you know, if you couldn't tell, like, that's the goal. We want to, quote, unquote, cancel out a number or just get rid of it. So we got rid of the negative 15 by adding it. And then, let's see, I'll even cross that out for you. And what will we have left over? We will have W, because so I have a W, nothing happened to the W, equals 21. 6 plus 15 is 21, right? Again, you can check using a calculator. Uh, negative 15, plug it in, plus 21. Negative 15 plus 21 is positive 6. Yes, that is the answer. Moving on, moving on. Um, number 4, I will just talk about it. Uh, the inverse operation of subtraction is addition. And you would add 5, but if you add 5 to the left side of the equal sign, uh, then you have to add 5 to the right side of the equal sign. Eventually, you will get z equals 13. And if you plug it in, 13 minus 5 is, oh, voila, 8. Let's go to number 5. So in all these problems so far, the variable has been on the left side. And I know it gets a little tricky when it goes on the right, but really it should not be because it is exactly the same. So you think I'm, you are trying to get the y by itself. And what is on the same side as the y? Of the equal sign, sorry. What is on the same side of the equal sign? Uh, look at it very carefully, you know, if you need to, I don't know, phone a friend or your mother or your father, whatever the case may be. Well, uh, the number on the same side of the equal sign on the right side is minus 9. So how do I cancel out a minus 9? Well, well bang, plus 9, plus 9. Again, these will results in 0, so we don't even are not even worried about it. Uh, negative 2 plus 9 is a positive 7. So I got 7 equals y. I know it's a little messy. Bear with me. This is my very first video. It'll be better next time. Uh, 7 equals y. And again, if you uh, plug it in, 7 minus 9 is equal to negative 2. It makes sense. And number 6, so we finish those easy problems uh, that are involving addition and subtraction. We, 
moved on to the next thing. So besides addition and subtraction, we cover uh, multiplication and division. For those of you who forgot, when you have two uh, numbers sitting next to each other with no symbol in between, like 7 and QR, that operation uh, with no symbol is multiplication. And don't forget, we are trying to use inverse operations, which is you know the opposite. So what is the opposite of multiplication? It is division. So I'll say 7Q. 7q equals 35. And earlier, you would see that the number that I used, like uh, in number one, the number that I subtracted was a four. Where did I get that from? Well, I see a plus four. So in this problem, you're thinking, well, what is the variable being multiplied by? Well, it's being multiplied by seven, so what should I divide it by? Well, the same thing, you're gonna divide it by seven. But again, if you divide on the left side by seven, you must also divide on the right side by seven. So I'll say seven Q divided by seven equals 35 divided by seven. Uh, seven divided by seven is one. Uh, so I know in, in the addition and subtraction problems we were canceling it out to become zero. But in this case, uh, with multiplication and division, when we uh, cancel a variable, so to speak, um, or sorry, cancel out a number, then we are just really trying to get it to turn into one. So seven divided by seven is one Q or just plain Q. Uh, and 35 divided by 7 is 5. So we plug, you know, we check, then we can say 7 times 5 is equal to 35. Um, boom, that's it. Uh, for number 7, we will be dividing both sides by 4, and you should get, you will get, b is equal to negative 13. Uh, for number 8, uh, let's see, I will write it like this. So we multiply. We multiply, you gotta multiply it on both sides. Sorry, why are we multiplying? Because the fraction bar means dividing by 11. So that is why we are multiplying. And what am, I, what am I multiplying by? Well, what number am I trying to cancel? What number do I need to get rid of? Well, I'm currently dividing by 11. So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply by 11. But if I do it on one side, you bet your sweet self that I gotta do it on the other side. So I have 11 times three, which is 33 and then <clears throat> this dividing by 11 and multiplying by 11 uh, just results in a 1 so I have 1 Q so 33 is equal to sorry equal to Q and if you think about it so there's the answer 33 is equal to Q or Q is equal to 33 it does not matter what side of the equal sign uh, the variable is on and if you think about it 33 divided by 11 is equal to 3 indeed. It doesn't matter what side of the equal sign the variable is on. Uh, so the last one, we are dividing by negative 2. What's the inverse operation of division? Multiplication. How do we get the number? You use the exact number that you were trying to cancel out. So we're going to multiply by negative 2, uh, both sides, and you will get n is equal to positive 30 because a negative times a negative is equal to a positive. Okay, we just got two more problems to go, and we'll be finished with these student journal problems. <clears throat> the first one, a coupon subtracts, oh, well, subtract, boom, $17.95 from the price P. So when you subtract something from, whatever you are subtracting it from goes first. That's just the way it is. So really, I will say P minus $17.95. If I said $17.95 minus P, I would be saying, oh, the starting price was $17.95 and I subtracted P. But that is not what this problem is telling you. You pay $71.80 for the headphones after using the coupon. So after I already subtracted it, how much is it equal? Well, you ended up paying $71.80. And that's it. Well, it says write and solve. So you ask yourselves to get P by itself to find the original price. If you, ha if you got a discount, that means it was cheaper, right? So $71.80 is the cheaper price. So whatever the original is, it's got to be a bigger number than $71.80, right? I hope everything I'm saying makes sense. It, it should be very intuitive. Um, so you should ask yourself, uh, to get P by itself, what is the inverse operation of this subtraction? Well, what is it? It is addition. So you'll add 1795 
to both sides of the equation and the answer uh, I will not solve it for you because you should just pick up a calculator and help yourself but it is P is equal to 71.80 or really the same thing as 71.8 but whatever plus 17.95 you figure it out use a calculator uh, and finally, moving on to the last problem in student journal. Uh, after you have a party, after a party, you have two fifths of the brownies you left made over. That means for every five brownies you made, you have two left over. So this is going to be kind of annoying because I haven't figured out how to write fractions on this thing yet, but whatever. Two over, that's a fraction. Pretend that was a straight line. Um, two over five. 2 over 5 times the number of brownies you started with is equal to, there are 16 left. So there's two things happening here. We are multiplying by 2 because they're right next to each other, but we're also dividing by 5. <clears throat> and truthfully, the answer is we can, uh, we can deal with this however you want to. We could multiply by 5 to cancel out the divide by 5. And then we could divide by 2 to cancel out the multiply by 2. Or we could start off by dividing by 2 and then multiplying by 5. Um, for those of you who are strong with your fractions, um, we're just going to multiply by the reciprocal. So what is the reciprocal? Uh, it's just when you take a fraction and you flip it. So in this case, uh, if you take 2 over 5 and flip it, you get 5 over 2. 5 over five over two and like I said don't forget if you do it on one side you got to do it to the other and bear in mind this is multiplying by the reciprocal now I'm not gonna waste all this time and, and rewrite that over on the right side but you get the gist if you think about it the two over five or the two, over two, 2 divided by 2 is going to be 1, and then 5 divided by 5 is also going to be 1. But you will have to write it on the right side, 16 times 5 over 2. And just so that there's no misunderstanding at all, I guess I will write it myself. 5 over 2. So you would take uh, 16 times 5, which is 80, and 80 divided by 2 is 40, and thus our final answer is B equals 40. Um, that's the end of the first section of the book. Uh, I hope everything made sense. If not, you are always welcome to uh, reach out and ask me uh, for clarification or re-explanations or really any clarification. Hopefully you understand this section a little better. It is called simple solving simple equations for a reason. This is the beginning of the year, the beginning of the book. Um, I hope that lesson went well for you because um, we're going to be building a lot more off of that.